Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. It's when I feel like it o'clock. And I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. No frills. Notice I don't have all the fancy things and blah, things in the background. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But we're going straight into, like, some NHL Pearls for you. All right? Tell me what you think about what I'm about to say here, about three topics that happened this week here in the NHL. Uh, by the way... Uh, Thanks for subscribing and the subscribe there. And I hope you're enjoying all your pearls of wisdom necklaces that Melissa and uh, Hernandez have been sent in, sending out, working all Christmas, sending them out to you. Uh, let's do a little pearl of dance, shall we? Pearl of dance. Uh, by the way, thank you for your TikTok uh, stuff that you sent me about all your families gathering around the tree with your pearls of wisdom necklaces and doing the pearl of dance with everybody. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca, I don't think you were supposed to have that many people over there here this year. That's what they said in the thing there, but I won't tell anybody, I promise. Okay, we're going to be talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois just got signed by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Interesting little story there. Z Zidane Ochara, one of the finest in the land, right? It's going to Washington. Wow, that was some news. And uh, then the funny thing is I heard some rumblings that he was going to Montreal. What? That would have been cray cray. Anyways, didn't happen. And then finally some funny stuff going on in Winnipeg again. Jack Rosovich, we're going to talk about that. So um, thank you. I Let me know. I some, Somebody commented there about the audio not being good in my last one. Hopefully it's all worked out now. Playing around with this new technology stuff, you know what I mean? Do I look like I'm 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 kind of reached that age where well, I know there's a lot of people my age. I just suck at technology. I'm not going to try to give you any excuses. It's just not my thing. I'm trying. I'm really really trying though. Okay. John Luke or Luke Dubois, whatever his name is. <laughs> <laughs> let's go check out this contract, shall we? All right, let's look. Pierre-Luc Dubois, John. John Luke. Pierre-Luc Dubois. He's from Quebec, Canada. 22 years old. Drafted third overall. Hey, by the way, nice move on that draft. Uh, my team, I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan, by the way. Uh, and uh, they, were, they had their hand. They weren't going to take Dubois, that draft. There was, uh, they had their hand on Matthew Kachuk's jersey. And when uh, Kekalainen, who, by the way, I was not a Puliyarvi fan at the time, and I was getting really, like, a lot of people at the time were like, what do you know, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, well, maybe I'm wrong. I just think he floats too much and uh, whatever. And I, I don't think he's going to be able to get away in the NHL what he got away with in junior with his body size and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and then Kekalainen, who is the European Gretzky of scouting, according to Europeans, and according to scouting, period, he's been amazing, he passes on Puglia Harvey. And I kind of made me think that I might have had something there. Anyways, they took Dubois. And uh, he was a, thought of as a winger, but they said that they thought they could make him into a center. Well, they sure have made him into a center because he has been absolutely fantastic for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, so they signed him to a new contract. 3.35 first year, two-year contract. 6.65 second year at an average of $5 million. Okay, first of all, if I could, if, I, if I'm if i Kekalainen, and I'm certainly not, <laughs> I love the name, but you got a little Kekalainen there. You might want to get that fixed. Um, so if I'm 5 million, I'm trying to get him signed for a long term, even if 7.5 million for eight years, if he would do it. I wonder if they offered that. I would love to know what they offered for a long-term con contract for Dubois. Because... They have some salary cap, some salary space, and they could make room. We'll look at that in a second. They could make room. But 
And even for Dubois, at seven and a half million for eight years, that's fifty six. I don't know, you know, something like that. Fifty and six and sixty million, somewhere around there. And now you don't need to worry about getting injured anymore. For a guy who plays the type of game he does, which is pretty rough and tumble, he plays both ways and he doesn't stop. Big six foot three guy, and he plays hard. That security might have been all right, but what he looks like he did, and I don't know if they offered him that kind of money. Maybe they didn't, but I think they probably did. He went and gambled on himself and went $3 million this year, so let's hope we don't get injured this year, and $6.65 million next year, although he'd still get paid that. And then he's basically set up. He's, he's 22, so he's going to be only, what, 25 at the end of this contract so he's got two more years to free agency but at a minimum of 6.6 which is that's why I think they structured this contract this way because basically the team is saying we believe you're going to be worth 6.6 at uh, when you get to uh, the second year of that contract when we got to renegotiate the contract at least which you could say he's almost worth that now almost he really could have been, he should have been more in the Selkie comp, uh, conversation as far as I'm concerned this year. He got 49 points in 70 games. Even that point production right there with the type of de- defense he plays puts him somewhere around five and a half, six million. You could even make a case he could be making Hayes money at seven. Hayes is making that kind of money. Then he gets 10 points in 10 playoff games. And still, Columbus, they sign a prove-it contract with them. Well, I have, uh, in my estimation, I think that Columbus is going to really wish they could have get a long-term contract uh, with this guy because I think he'll prove it. As long as he doesn't get injured, he's going to very much prove it. Out of 23-24, I could see him being a 60-70 point guy, 60-point guy, and maybe come, you know, start having some serious Selkie talk in it. So you're looking at now possibly an eight to nine million dollar player. Not to mention um, you know, a leader and all the things he does in his room and just a champion attitude and everything, all the intangibles he brings. Um it's probably gonna pay off for him, I would say. Not a bad gamble. Not a bad gamble, except it's difficult when you're talking about an injury. He gets injured and things can be difficult. So I don't know. If I'm getting offered the seven and a half for a long-term contract for that security, eh, difficult decision. Well, we don't know what they offered. I'm just thinking it was likely that Columbus was offering something like that. Taking the gamble, yeah, you're going to get more money in the long term. For sure, Dubois is going to get more money in the long term. Also, we have to remember there's something else with Columbus here. Uh, that makes it difficult for the Columbus Blue Jackets and could make it difficult for him is that um, – oh, I took, it, I took it off of here, but I'll, I'll get it back again. Um, could make it difficult for him is they have two very important players assigned at the exact same time. Seth Jones now will be a UFA on the year 222, or 22-23. Um, and Wierenski will also be will be a restricted free agent, so they're going to have to sign them at the, on that year. So that's going to be a huge year for them. Max Domi's going to need a contract. Uh, Boone Jenner, okay, maybe not. He's going to be long on the tooth by then, and maybe take less. But there's going to be a lot, a very interesting year for them to sign all these players at that time. So let's move on to the Washington Capitals and Zdeno Chara going from the Boston Bruins to the to the to the Washington Capitals. Now the first thing I want to mention, and I probably should have brought it up, put it up here, but um, Sweeney came out almost immediately and said, "We just want to let you know that we did offer Z- Zdeno Chara a contract." Um, they offered him a contract, but they were very honest with him that they wanted to be bringing, seeing what they have in their young players. Um, they have Euro Vekanainen and my good buddy, the GOAT, 
Joe from Off the Wall Hockey, um, says that he's like a very an offensive defenseman. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I totally agree with him that. I think he's a two A defenseman. He doesn't put all that much offense up. He's still got a lot of work to do, but they want to give him a shot. They want to put him up there and see what he can do. Um, the kind of language that he's using, Jacob Zaboro. Now, they've been grooming Jacob Zaboro for quite some time. So, but uh, this, as well as uh, Becca Ninen, Mr. Uh, Joe John from Off the Wall has watched a lot of AHL games. He plays for the Providence Bruins. John is a Boston fan and watches, loves his Bruins. So he watches Providence games and says that he is not a fan of Jacob Zaboro. He's, he's not good in any area of the ice is kind of the way he puts it. But they're going to give him a shot. He was that in that 2015 draft class where they had three picks and they didn't take Barzal, but they took Zaboro. So that's a little awkward. Um, also, they have Lauzone, who I believe if you look on here, no, they don't even have Lauzone on here. Uh, yeah, they do. Jeremy Lauzone, they're talking about playing on their their uh, in the top four. And I, from what I've seen of Jeremy Lauzone, I do also want to see more of him. Um, after letting Crew grown go now and Chara, You've got Matt Grizzlick at 26 going to be playing that top left defense role. You've got Jeremy Lozome going to be playing the, the second left defense role. So these are this is a Boston team that is saying we're getting younger, and for good reason. Their core players are simply getting old. Chara, obviously, at 43 years old. By the way, how fantastic is he at 43 years old? Great uh, defenseman at 43. It's been so fun to watch. You can't help but love the guy. But they also have Marshawn is 32. He's not getting any younger. Um, still putting up great production, but still. Patrice Bergeron at 35. How long is he going to be able to keep up the pace he's at? I don't know. He he doesn't seem to be dropping too much every year. But you got to figure there's going to be a drop somewhere down the road. David Krejci, who's been injured a lot at 34. You could see him falling off soon, and he's up for a contract. So who knows if he'll be back. So they are kind of preparing themselves, I think, for, for a retool, rebuild, where you don't have to tear it all down, but you want to bring up your young players and start producing now because maybe you might have to miss the playoffs a couple of times to get some guys from Bergeron's caliber, but you don't want to do it for 10 years like, say, I don't know, the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> you know, you don't want those kind of huge rebuilds or what's happening in Detroit where it looks like it's still going to be a few more years. Uh, it's not fun. It's not fun. And nobody wants that. So I'm pretty sure that's what they're looking at here. So let's go over to see what Charlie his new new experience here in Washington and where he fits in for the Washington Capitals. Well, first of all, what is he going to do at 43 years old? I didn't mind Zidane Ochara last year. I still think he has a lot to give to a team at 43 years old. I could see him playing very high. I could see him playing up here. I could see him playing with John Carson. Now, I don't think he's going to get the, the you know, 30 minutes a game or 25 even, maybe 13, 14 minutes, but play him just on the uh, five on five on five let Carlson go and he can basically take care of his own zone and he doesn't have to be the be all to everybody type player that he's been his whole career you know this is guy guy that's going to be a hall of famer he's likely going to be talked about in the top 15 defensemen of all time maybe even the top 10 of all time I'd put him there myself and um it's obvious to me now, again, Sweeney did say, well, I did want to mention, he did offer him a contract. The thing was, he said he was going to bring these young players up. And it seemed like Chara, what he loves more than anything, and he loves Boston, and really what people love about Chara the most is the guy just loves to play hockey. And when it came right down to it, his love for Boston, which I'm sure is enormous, which I know is enormous, wasn't as enormous as his love to play. And he's going to get a chance to play in Washington and not only to play, but to compete. And I'm telling you, I have Washington winning this East Division, which is very strong. 
I could definitely see a wa Washington coming out with a, coming out with a cup here, especially a guy with the kind of experience that did say Dan Ochara has. What is Dan Ochara going to do for Dmitry Orlov? Who I know he's not super young; he's twenty nine years old, but he's still at an age where he could still grow a lot, and Z's going to help that a lot. They have some younger players coming up, like uh, Jonas Siegenthaler, who kind of plays the same kind of game as Chara, that he's going to be able to help out an awful lot. He just brings a whole lot to this team. I, I don't know if you could have picked a team that was a better fit for Chara. And good for you, Chara, for or Z, for being able to extend your career, go out, go out. And I think that's kind of the reason why he left Boston. If they're kind of on a rebuild mode after losing Krug, who knows what's happening in the near future. Maybe he doesn't get to keep compete for the cup every year like he likely will with Washington. So great move for everybody there. Um, I'm, I'm really glad for Z. So let's go on to our final topic of the day. Uh, Winnipeg Jets. And um, like I said, there has been some problems with the Winnipeg Jets and their ability to sign players. Um, Jack Roslovich now has come out and said he's basically going to not play this year unless he gets what he calls a fair contract. Now, we don't know how much Jack Roslovich has been uh, offered. We don't know, you know, how fair this contract actually is. But what we do know is that uh, Jack Roslovic has been, or that Winnipeg has had problems far too many times signing players. Jacob Truba. Where, uh, Jacob Truba, First contract that he had when he was a restricted free agent was a barn burner. They just, he was not happy with what they were offering. Um, they ended up giving him a, I thought was an undervalued contract when it happened. I don't, I'm not going to bring it up here right now, but um, it was an undervalued contract. He left with a bad taste in his mouth. Uh, it was a two-year deal, I believe. And he basically had no leverage. So he just said, screw it. I'll take it, whatever. They kept on playing him on the lower lines at the time. At the time, they had Myers playing in the top four. And honestly, and you might have heard this, we've talked about this with John from Off the Wall, with um, Peyton uh, from uh, Peyton on the radio and I, we've talked a lot about Myers and the fact that we don't think he's a top four defenseman. A lot of people don't think he's a top four defenseman. He's more of a 5'6", and they kept on playing him higher than uh, Truba. Now, when it goes to, came to contract time again, he's saying, I'm a top four defenseman. I want to be paid like a top four defenseman. And uh, that's it. And they're basically, it looked like they were coming back and saying, well, you know, you were playing in the 5-6 and we're going to pay you as a 5-6. Not to mention, he also wanted a long-term deal. He didn't want to go again uh, with a, um, even though he didn't have that much leverage, he didn't want to go again with another um, two, three-year contract. So they bounded back and forth, and finally Truba pretty much said, I'm out of here. I want to trade. I want out of here. And then when Winnipeg does want the trade, they demand a top four defenseman back in return. Now, why would you demand a top four defenseman back in return unless you thought Truba was a top four defenseman? Not only a top four defenseman, but a top four right-handed defenseman, which is part of the reason why Truba's saying, yes, I deserve a lot of money because I'm big, I'm strong, I'm a top four defenseman. Uh, all of these things that Truba is, although when he went to New York, he kind of made uh, Chevy look, Shevel Dayoff look a little better because he kind of struggled right off the get-go. But the fact of the matter is, is it seems like they're playing these little games. And then Lion A as well. Um, I'm going to bring up Lion A. I'm going to bring up, uh, in fact, I got it right here. Lion A as well. They have him in cap friendly as a playing on the left wing, which he can play. But last year, they were very often playing Lion A with Adam Lowry. And uh, when Jack Little was in the lineup, they would play him with Jack Little, or with uh, Little. 
and um, Brian Little, I should say. And uh, Little was injured and not a shell of his old self. He should have been playing with Shifley the whole time. Wheeler can play at center. He's a darn good centerman. They could play him there. They should have been playing Lion A with Shifley. And I think Lion A is saying, look, I did everything the coach told me to do. I realize I got to work my way up the lineup. But it was painfully obvious that he should have been playing on the top line. Just look at his freaking numbers, man. Even though they were kind of jacking him around in the lineup, he's still pulling, what, 30 goals in 2018-19, where they really did it to him there. Honestly, they really did it to him there. After pulling 70 points where they were playing him higher in the lineup and he scored 44 goals, they all of a sudden started burying him down in the lineup, playing him with little far too often, saying, well, we're trying to get production from our lower lines. And he's like, okay, you know what? I don't mind. But when it comes contract time, you're paying me like I'm playing with Shifley. And they're not. And they're jacking him around. And they're, I don't know what they're offering. I don't know what the offer is. Are all these players just being a little too greedy and over-evaluating themselves? I don't think so. I really don't. I think Winnipeg is really doing, trying to do it. It looks to me like Winnipeg's doing a number on these guys. I saw them. I kept on wondering, why are they playing Lion-A down there with Lowry? What kind of effect is that going to have on Lion-A? And how is that even going to help them produce? Now, I know they want to play him a little better defense, and maybe that's why they're playing him down there to – give him a uh, incentive to play defense. But Lion is never going to be your best defensive player, okay? He's simply not. And if you don't like it, then you should trade him. And I'm on Lion A's side here. I don't know what they're going to get for him, but I bet you it's not going to be the value that they're supposed to. And I don't know what they're offering Ra uh, Roslovich right now, but they're probably not going to get the value for him that they should for the reason why he also was played down on the third line. And, uh, you know, bantied about. He, in fact, he was even worse. They had him playing with everybody. His line seemed to change all the time. They were trying to use him as a utility guy. And for a guy at his age, he really needs stability. And I think he should have. they should have tried him a lot more higher in the lineup. So anyways, they're probably going to end up trading him. Maybe I'll do a, a video here in the next little while on what he may get traded for or what have you or what his value is now. But I doubt it's going to be his value. And I just have a feeling that if whoever he gets traded to will play him higher, will give him more stability, and he could end up making Winnipeg look really bad. So that's my full 42%, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Uh, thank, uh, thanks again for subscribing. I hope you all get your pearls or wisdom necklaces. Uh, have yourself an incredible new year because uh, it's going to be an incredible new year, isn't it? It's going to be absolutely fantastic. 2020, uh, yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> Enough of you. Off with you now. We're off to 2021, yo. We're going to have hockey in two weeks. It's going to be so awesome. Like, subscribe. Love y'all. Okay, bye.